Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Michael and today we will take a look at one of the newest releases from San Martin. It's the SN0054-2. It is a very well made vintage inspired and sporty GMT watch with a stainless steel bezel, which I'm a huge fan of. This watch was not provided by San Martin for free. I did buy this watch from my own money, but I did receive a small discount from their AliExpress store which I will link in the description down below. That's why you saw the paid promotion icon on the top left of the corner of the screen. Before we start, this watch is currently available in two different variants and with two different dial colors. The older version has faux patina indices and hands, and the newer one has white indices and also features a date complication. Here I have the newest model with the black dial and the white indices. It currently costs around 440 euro, which I admit is a lot of money for an AliExpress brand. So I would highly recommend waiting for the next big AliExpress sale, which is going to be the 1111 sale, and it's going to be very very soon. On a side note, if you are located in the EU, I also recommend checking out skbwatches.com. They have EU stock of some models and you don't have to pay any custom fees or taxes on top of the price anymore. But is the high price justified? Is this watch worth it? Let's find out. First of all, let's start with the packaging. The San Martin watch comes in this black tube-like box. I actually like it a lot, it is a welcome change for once. Most AliExpress watches come in this plastic box or are just wrapped in a plastic wrap. Inside the box you will find a stamped warranty card, a sticker and some tools that you will need for sizing the bracelet. I was also surprised to find this in here. I believe that it's some kind of Loctite. You can apply it on the screws of the bracelet to prevent them to go loose. Not sure if you need to do that, I never had a screw come loose on the San Martin watch, but nonetheless it's a very thoughtful addition. Let's go over the specs and the dimensions real quick. This watch has a case diameter of 39.7mm and a lug to lug length of 47.8mm. The most important factor here is the thickness. This watch comes in at 12.7mm in height and that is including the domed sapphire crystal. This is one of the biggest reasons why I went for this San Martin watch, rather than the watch that this one is homaging. The log width is 20mm and features a bracelet with female endlings. The bracelet tapers down nicely to 16mm and goes back up to the clasp at 18mm. The weight of the watch is 141 grams, sized to my wrist. This San Martin watch has a water resistance rating of 100 meters, which is quite surprising to be honest. I was expecting 200 meters because it features a screw down crown and a screw in case back. Anyways, 100 meters should be enough for everyday activities. If you ask me, these are almost perfect dimensions when it comes to a stainless steel sports watch. In fact, the size and the weight of the watch is very similar to my Tudor Black Bay 58, and that is exactly what I was hoping for, to be honest. You see, when Tudor released their BB Pro, I was hoping that it would wear just like my Tudor Black Bay 58, because for those of you who don't know, this watch wears incredibly well, it is super comfortable and it just sits perfectly on my wrist. And this San Martin does wear very similar to it. You can see that the San Martin does appear to be a slightly bigger watch. I would say it wears more like a 40mm diver, especially if you wear it on the bracelet. Here's how the watch looks like on my average size 7 inch wrist. I think it wears fantastically well, especially if you keep in mind that the OG is 14mm thick and this one only 12.7mm. So for those of you who wish that the BB Pro would be a bit slimmer, then you should consider this San Martin. Let's check out the finishing and the build quality. This is an area in which San Martin is really good at, so you should be expecting exceptional finishing here. And that is actually the case. The top of the locks are brushed and so are the sides of the watch. We have a very beautiful high polish chamfer along the locks. The bezel is fantastically finished as well. We have a satin brushing on top and a polish on the side. I really like the light play you get from these high polished surfaces. Let's talk about the bracelet. 
This section might be a bit long, but I'm just such a big fan of it. The bracelet is fitted incredibly well onto the case. There's no wobble here. We have a fine brush on the topper of the bracelet and a mirror polish on the sides, which to be honest doesn't go that well with the case of the watch. I think it would be better if the sides would be brushed as well, but that's just a minor detail. The clasp is beautifully made as well. It is the clasp that San Martin uses on almost all of their watches nowadays. It has an applied hexagonal logo and it features four micro adjustment holes. Unfortunately, you won't get any quick adjust system here. I am hoping that San Martin are working on that secretly behind the scenes. I think that this would elevate their watches even further. But I am not complaining, in fact, I make the bold statement that this is the best bracelet you will find on a watch under $500. Prove me wrong and let me know in the comment section down below. The case pack is very plain and simple. The reason for that is so that you can design it on your own using San Martin's custom engraving service. I personally don't mind that, but it would be nice to see some kind of branding on the case pack, maybe an etched San Martin logo or something. That said, that would probably make the watch more expensive in the process, so I would rather have a sterile case pack and pay less money for the entire watch, if you know what I mean. Let's take a closer look at the dial. We have here a matte black dial with printed indices. We have a printed minute track at the outer perimeter, a triangle at 12 o'clock, batons at 3, 6 and 9, and circles everywhere else. Basically everything is printed on here. Their San Martin logo is located at the 12 o'clock position and here I have to say that I'm glad that they didn't choose their applied logo. This one goes very well with the overall aesthetic of the watch. The words GMT Automatic and 100 meters, 330 feet, are printed below the pinion. I really like the fact that they chose the same kind of orange color as they used on the GMT hand. The date complication is nicely executed as well. I really like how they cut the baton marker at 3 in the middle and place the date window there. It makes the dial more symmetrical this way. The handset is borrowed from the watch that this is inspired from. We have a snowflake hour, seconds and GMT hand. The blacked out balance tip of the seconds hand is a really nice touch here. One might assume that the loom would suffer based on the fact that the dial is all printed, but the loom is performing really well. I have to say that compared to their other watches, it does fade a little bit faster. Here I have the SN0021, which has applied markers and you can tell that the loom of the GMT isn't as long lasting. Maybe they didn't manage to apply more layers of Superluminova, I don't know. Still, the loom is very impressive for a watch in this price category. The screw down crown features also the hexagonal San Martin logo and is located at the 3 o'clock position. We can use it to operate the GMT movement. And speaking of movement, beating inside this watch is the Hangzhou 6460, which is basically a clone of the ETA 2836. It is a high beat GMT movement, ticking at 28,800 beats per hour. It features 25 jewels, a 42 hour of power reserve and it does hack and hand wind. I heard many people say that this movement is junk or outright bad, but that's not the case at all. It has been performing really well, I have to say. The winding is very smooth compared to the PT5000. If we unscrew the crown and pull it to the first position, we can change the date and the GMT hand. The GMT hand jumps in half hour increments, so it is not a true GMT movement. But hey, you can't really expect that at this price point. If we pull the crown to the second position, the movement will hack and we can adjust the time accordingly. The orange GMT hand helps us to track a second time zone. Protecting the dial is a top hat sapphire crystal with blue AR coating. They could have went the easy way and chose to install a flat sapphire crystal instead, but they didn't. And I think that this crystal is outright beautiful. I have owned many watches in the past and you guys have to believe me when I say that San Martin features amazing crystals, especially in this price range. Now, let's talk about the pros and the cons of the watch. Let's start with the positives. 
First of all, as you all know by now, San Martin delivers great build quality for the price. You get a fantastic combination of specs for your money. I like comparing them to other brands like Seiko, Citizen, Orient, Hamilton and so on and San Martin blows them easily out of the water. I said it before and I will say it again and you might disagree with me here, but solely based on the finishing and build quality, they are comparable to brands like Tissot, Longines, Rado or Oris. And I believe that even though San Martin lacks the prestige and the heritage, they make up for it in terms of build quality and finishing. Another thing that I like about this watch, and it's the reason why I bought it, is the fact that it fixes what I didn't like about the BB Pro. The thickness. I know that 14mm isn't that bad, but when St. Martin did their version with a 12.7mm case height, I was super excited. I also like the fact that they listen to what their customers want. Their initial release of this watch came with a heavy amount of faux patina, which some people liked and some people didn't. I personally just wished for a date function because this is what I need on a daily basis. And guess what? San Martin listened and delivered a product that we wanted. Let's talk about the negatives and the things that I'm not really fond of. I mentioned it before, but I would prefer if they brush the sides of the bracelet so it matches the finishing of the case. But that's just a minor thing. One small negative that I noticed about San Martin watches is that their cases, although being beautifully made, sit rather flat on the wrist and don't have that much curvature. I think that San Martin should either make their lugs a little bit shorter or try to make them curve downwards a bit more. I am thinking something along the lines of a Christopher Ward diver. I am a big fan of their cases and the way the lugs are designed. Now I am not saying that this is the case with this San Martin watch. I can just get away with it because my wrist is rather flat anyways, but it's just something that I noticed in the recent releases. Another negative point is the pricing of the watch. I know that many people think that their pricing is a bit too high. After all, their newest releases are in the 300 to 400 euro price range. I still believe that it's a fantastic value for money proposition, but I've read the comments and I know that people want San Martin to make more affordable watches, more in the 200 250 euro price range, which to be fair, they still do. The thing is, everything gets more and more expensive nowadays and watches are one of these things as well. All right, guys, we reached the end of the video. Please let me know what you think about this San Martin watch in the comment section down below. As mentioned before, I am a huge fan of it and I am wearing it almost daily, to the point where I kind of feel bad for all of my other watches. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, consider subscribing if you haven't already. This is Michael and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers!